Well, hello, friends. It's Pearl of Wisdom here, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, where all the free agents in the NHL will go series. Uh, we started out with uh, Ovechkin, and we did Hamilton. Uh, we went all the way down the list. We're doing everybody. And by we, I mean the people that come on my show from 3 to 5 Eastern on this channel, which you're listening to right now, we, uh, we got together and we put our heads together and we came up with the place for all the uh, free agents. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go back and do it and we're going to do a points game where I go to every free agent. I'm doing that today from 3 to 5. Today is Tuesday the... Uh, uh, 22nd. I don't, I don't pay attention to days. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to go down every free agent and they're going to tell us where they think it's going to go. They're going to go and I'm going to write it down and they're going to get points, which will bring them fabulous prizes. So you might want to do that fine stuff. It's fun. You should do it. Okay. Remember to hit the subscribe and the bell. I'll send you a my NHL pearls of wisdom necklace. Perlocoptered right to your door. You know what I haven't did in a long time? Helen has ground up some nice pearls for us. So uh, she's she's getting a little older. It takes her a little longer to do them. So I got some for you. I've been getting letters from people. Where How come you're not sending pearls out to the land anymore? And I'm like, well, you know, Helen's getting older now. It takes longer for her to do it. And then they asked me, like, why don't you do it? And I'm like, because I don't do that sort of thing. Are you kidding me? Here we go. There you go. Pearls to all the land. There, all the COVID is gone. Boom. Done. See ya. Okay, I got Tyson Berry in the background here, as you can tell, Mr. Tyson Berry. I know you're watching. Hope you're enjoying those pearls coming to you right now. We will be talking about Tyson Berry somewhere in this video as we continue in our series of where will they go? I just thought I'd try it like that. Okay. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to go to the free agency. No, that's not it. That's not it. That's it. Okay. Okay, let's get everybody here so we can see it. Pekka Rene is where we're starting. Pekka Rene. Okay. Pekka Rene is, hasn't really mentioned whether he's going to retire or not. Going to be 39 years old. He actually had a really good season last year, though. If we, if I'm going to get my head out of the way. How about that? How would I get my freaking head out of the way? Uh, all right. There we go. He had a 284 and a .907 playing for a lot of time for a team that wasn't playing all that great um, in uh, Nashville. But later on, he started to, and he put up better numbers when the team played better. Funny thing, right? He also, when uh, Saros was down, Pekka Rene took, uh, played really well for an extended period of time. If he's available, I think there'll be teams interested. He's going to definitely come in cheaper than what his last contract was, which I do believe. Do they have it here? Yeah. Five million. Yeah. Like way cheaper than that. I think you probably would get him for maybe two, maybe even a million and a half. Something like what Smith got in uh, uh, Edmonton. So tell me who you think the Pecorini would go. We were thinking like the Pittsburgh Penguins for Jari would be a really good thing. Philadelphia Flyers maybe have a little help with Carter Hart there. Um, because if Carter Hart isn't the good, they're, they're screwed. I mean, they're not going anywhere if Carter Hart isn't there. Uh, I, I also thought maybe San Jose Sharks, because this uh, I, I think that would be a really good spot for him, the San Jose Sharks. First of all, it's a warm city. He's kind of in the retirement place. It feels like a retirement place. Pittsburgh doesn't really, you know. Um, but that may not matter to him. But 
Uh, San Jose also isn't going to have much uh, cap space to work with, and they're going to have to really take some risks and find cheap guys that hopefully can pan out for them to get them into the playoffs. Pekarene could be that guy. Help Jones out somehow. He did really well with Soros. So those are my three. Uh, maybe, you know, the, maybe Toronto Maple Leafs. There's, I think there's a lot of teams out there that would have some interest in uh, Pekka Rene. Uh, Frederick Anderson, also, I, I, to the teams I just mentioned may be interested. He was injured last year a lot. Um, I think his value is going to be pretty low this year. And it's going to completely depend on whether he's back from his injury. I don't know what the injury was. But if he can be totally healthy, you can probably get him on the cheap. And, I mean, when he was well, he was a good goaltender. So I could see a lot of teams being interested in Frederick Anderson if they if the doctors there say he's good to go, um, give him a shot. They'll give him a one-year at $2.5 million. Um, you know, the, like I said, the aforementioned uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, if Jonathan Quick decides to retire, maybe in L.A., you could go there. That sounds like a really good spot to help Peterson out. Uh, uh, Washington Capitals could really use a backup goaltender, and Pekka Rene for them, too. Basically, anywhere you could really think of Pekka Rene going, Maybe Anderson could go to those places too. This is assuming that Lundqvist isn't going to play in this year for Washington. Um, they probably don't want to go back into the play uh, back into the playoffs next year with the same rookie, you know, young goaltender tandem. I I would think that, anyways. But lots of teams could be interested in Frederick Anderson. Uh, Gabrick is retired, of course. He's injured, so it doesn't really matter. Kyle Palmieri, the first team that came up when we did Kyle Palmieri was the Boston Bruins. Uh, A bunch of guys in the chat said the Boston Bruins. And that makes sense, except I'm just not sure they're going to be able to afford them. I mean, they would have to take Palmieri and not take Hall. Because I think Palmieri is going to get a fairly good-sized contract, even though he only put up 21 points. In the regular season, he has a history of putting up 30 goal, 30 goal uh, uh, years. So, I think he's going to go somewhere, uh, possibly Boston. If they could get him, maybe he wants to go to Boston. Goes there for a little cheaper. New going back to New Jersey is a big possibility as well. I know they would take him back in a heartbeat if he's willing to come, um, and uh, he could probably get a fair dollar there. I think that's likely going to be the case. Then, of course, does he go back to the Islanders? And I just don't see them having the cap space for that. Uh, they're they're going to have to, I think they're going to have to bolter, bolster their defense. As well as they've done so far in the playoffs, I think losing Taze really did hurt. And uh, I know that there's uh, some young players coming up that can help, but they're not going to replace Taves and Dobson's going to get better. I get that, but they're likely going to lose a player also in the uh, expansion draft, uh, possibly like Mayfield or something like that. So there, I think adding to their defense is going to be more important. I've mentioned a lot. The LA Kings are going to be looking for forwards. They they've come out and said that the rebuild is over. So watch for them to do something like this. The Edmonton Oilers are going to be looking for wingers, especially if they don't sign Nugent Hopkins. Um, I think that the Edmonton Oilers could be in on something like Palmieri. This all depends on well, pe- where Palmieri would like to go. Um, if he wants to stay in that area, I think New Jersey would be the best bet. But those are some of the places they might go. I think he's going to go back to New Jersey. Tell me in the comment section whether you think he's going to go there or not. Marcus Johansson could go just about anywhere, honestly. Um, he's, a, he's a utility guy. Um, but I, I think a lot, most of the teams that take Marcus Johansson, he generally jumps around everywhere. He could stay in Minnesota if they're happy with him there. But I have a feeling that Minnesota's got some young players coming up that he's sort of in the way a little bit. 
So I think he will go somewhere else. Um, as I mentioned before, the San Jose Sharks, any team that's up against the cap and uh, is looking for some depth scoring, again, the Pittsburgh Penguins, um, the Florida Panthers. Um, he, has he already been back to the Florida Panthers? No, I don't think so. The other one, the other way he could go, if he wants to really go for some money, he could probably get a bigger salary for teams that are on the bottom, like like the, the Phoenix Coyotes, who are looking just to fill in roster spots and get to the cap floor. If he's looking for money, I'd say that would be a really good place for him to go. Um, and and uh, like the St. Louis Blues are against the cap, and they lose some people in expansion. There's a lot of places he can go. He's a very useful player. He can play up and down the lineup. Uh, he can't. They have him as a center, but really he's a terrible centerman. He's mostly a winger, and you can play him up and down the lineup. Uh, there's a lot of teams that don't want him. Uh, Jason Demers, he's 33. I didn't really have the greatest season in Arizona. At this point, he's probably going to play a seventh defenseman role somewhere with the team that needs depth. So I won't talk too much about that. Brandon Sutter. I just have a feeling he's going to go play with his uncle in Calgary. They love players like him. He's big. He doesn't really do all that much. <laughs> um, but he's a setter. And he'll probably take less to go there. Feels like the Calgary Flames to me. Some other places he may go. Um, maybe Toronto Maple Leafs want to go with. Uh, they need that third line center. Please no Edmonton Oilers. I know you need a third line center, but that's not it. That's not it. He's not very good defensively at all. I really don't want a third-line center that can't play defense. Um, Buffalo Sabres will probably have to fill out some roster spots. So he, if he wants to go for some money, that would be a place. If, t if players want to go for some real money, it's where the, they're going to fill out roster spots. So I don't know what he's going to get because he had a poor year last year in Vancouver. Then, then he may just keep him in Vancouver. It's possible. Uh, Brandon Smith. Uh, I again a seventh defenseman mostly. If uh, if he's going to go, oh, another place for Palmieri. Sorry, Seattle Kraken. He's only thirty years old. Seattle Kraken would be a very smart place for him to go if he wants to make some money. I for, did I forget about Ryan Murray? Ryan Murray, I had Ryan Murray going to the Toronto Maple Leafs. It just seems like their type of player. He's good defensively. He's not very physical. It, it just seems like it. He's injured a lot, so he won't cost much. Uh, what was he making? 4.6. I doubt he makes maybe three in his next contract, three and a half. Maybe somebody will overpay for him. I just can't see it. with all. He, just because he had one injury-free season, before that, he was injured all the time. But that being said, teams that need defensive help, like the Vancouver Canucks, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Winnipeg Jets, uh, will probably call and see what they can get them for. Those, those, those are the ones that come to mind. Let me know if you know where else he may go in the comment section. Um, Brandon Smith could go just about anywhere. At 32, he's on the downside of a career that wasn't spectacular to begin with. So, honestly, I don't know. Maybe the Detroit go back to the Detroit Red Wings. He's also been a thorn in the side for teams quite a bit with stupid penalties and stuff like that. So, I'm not really sure. But I'm going to say the Detroit Red Wings go back there again. They could just use some veterans until they fill out their roster. So, anyway, let me move myself. Again, up here now. Uh, Devin Dubnik, maybe retire. It's possible. I'm not sure. Somebody will sign him as a third liner. Ian Cole likely will stay in Minnesota. Um, he fit well there, and he liked it. He, 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 I'm sure he'd like to stay in one spot. For a bit, he's moved around quite a bit. He did really well there. They they don't really have anybody to take his position right now. I think he'll resign in Minnesota. Antti Ranta, 
somebody's going to take a chance on him, but he's so injury prone that it's hard to say. Uh, I'm, who can, who's going to take a chance with those injuries? It's going to have to be a team that really, really, really doesn't want to pay a lot for gold. How about the Tampa Bay Lightning? I'd say the Tampa Bay Lightning. McElhaney should probably retire at the end of this year. And Antti Ranta, if, they can, if he can not be injured, that would be an incredible one-two punch there with Vasilevsky. I don't think anybody's going to tr- give him a chance at a number one with his injury history. So, uh, I would sign him to a something a contract where it's basically a games played contract. If you play this many games, we'll pay you this much. If not, you know, sort of thing like that. David Savard. Um, oh, what did? Somebody said there was a really good spot for him. Montreal likes those kind of guys, but that's not who it was. I heard Edmonton Oilers. I think we have enough defensemen like that. I don't think that's a really good idea. Um, Again, the LA Kings. um, Winnipeg Jets is a good one. Uh, The other one was the most interesting one, and the one I think that could very well be the place. He is from Quebec, David Savard. I could see him going to the Ottawa Senators. Really close. I mean, Montreal for sure, if they were going to take him. But if not, Ottawa looked really good at the end of the year. I know he's kind of, he's 30 years old. He's got a couple years. If he can see the future and what Ottawa is going to be, and it looks like it's going to be really good, he could get in there now and help out as a veteran. I, I they, they got a spot for him there. I think it would be a great place to go. Uh, at what cost? You know, uh, I think he's probably going to get at least as much as he was already making, maybe more, four to five million dollars a year. I don't know if Ottawa is going to be cool with that, paying a defensive defenseman that kind of money, but um, it would be a perfect fit. Adam Larson almost assuredly is going to stay as an Oiler. Um, they are doing everything they can to get him hooked up on a contract. I think he's going to get six million. I think it's an overpayment. I don't agree with it, but it's likely where he's going to go. I know I'm. I live in Edmonton, so I hear a lot about it. Matthew Perot is so interesting. First of all, he could stay in Winnipeg, but he's not going to get his four million. But I don't think he's going to do too bad. He is a player. Matthew Perot can play center. He can play wing. He can play up. He's got enough skill to play on your top line, although he gets pushed around a little bit because of his size. But he's a gamer. He doesn't give up. And he can play in your bottom pairing, your fourth pairing. Like, he just seems to – he's like a chameleon. He can adapt to anything. I could see him going to Montreal because, of course, he's from that area. I could see him going to a bevy of teams, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, uh, San Jose, Carolina, like name it. He's he's one of those guys that almost all teams love to have. Tampa Bay, if they lose a couple people because of the uh, cap, somebody like that. Like he's going to find a spot. He could go to Nashville. Like name a team, really. Just about any team can use a Matthew Perot. Uh, Nick Bukestad, I think he's going to stay in Minnesota. He didn't do too bad. He had 17 points in 44 games. Still has to use his law, learn how to use his body better. But he'll take, I think he'll take a hometown discount probably for a million and a half. I think people realize that he's a third or fourth now and uh, just stay home. I think he'll just stay home. Benino, I am saying the Edmonton Oilers because I pray to God that it is the Edmonton Oilers. (laughs) I want it to be the Edmonton Oilers so bad. I love this guy. Defensive defenseman. Defensive defenseman that uh, puts up some decent, or defenseman, he's not a defenseman, defensive center that plays both ways extremely well, has amazing character, uh, and uh, doesn't give up on plays, can teach young guys how to play the game, plays the way every coach wants a player to play, which can come in handy in organizations where they really feel that that's what they need. 
Again, the Toronto Maple Leafs, if they're looking for a third-line center, this would be a fantastic one. I think he's going to get paid almost what he's getting now. Vancouver Canucks love guys like this, but I'm saying the Edmonton Oilers. Alec Martinez, I think he could go back to L.A. He really loved L.A. He doesn't want to leave Vegas. L.A. is saying that they don't that they're, they're, the rebuild is over. I think he ends up going back to L.A., but if he chooses not to, the New Jersey Devils would be all over and Alec Martinez. If he wants to go for the money, he could get some good money in New Jersey. Somebody's going to pay huge. He's one of the most underrated defensemen in the league. Somebody can pay big for him. Um, again, Toronto Maple Leafs, all the te teams I've mentioned before that are really needing defense in a big, bad way, uh, he could go to. But I'm thinking he goes back to L.A. Mike Hoffman. Anybody that needs some power play help, uh, I don't. He, I think this year he showed in St. Louis that he's a power play guy. That's all he really is. Um, he, he's terrible defensively. His five on five is not good. So um, he could stay in St. Louis. There could be. If he wants to make some money, go to Anaheim. Go to uh, Seattle. Seattle Kraken would be a great place for him to go, because uh, they're going to need goal scoring there. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say he signs with the Seattle Kraken. Montour, um, probably moving on from Florida. Again, he's 27 years old. I think he's going to go with the um, bottom feeder teams like the Anaheim Ducks, uh, Arizona Coyotes. They're really going to need some defensemen there because they've got a lot of guys on free agency that are heading out. They're also tra talking about trading uh, uh, Larson, Ekman Larson. So I would say Arizona. Smart move for him. Make some get get the get a bigger paycheck. Play for a team that probably isn't going to do well, but it gives you an opportunity. Take a, a three-year. Hopefully, by the time you're 30, people see your value and you can grow more and you, you get lots of ice time. So, Darren Helm, I'm not even sure if he might not retire. He's had some injury problems, so I'm not really sure. Finally, Tyson Berry. This is where we're going to end. Tyson Berry's not going to Edmonton. Edmonton Oilers fans are, are out talking about or are saying a lot about it. I just don't see it happening. Got to start giving ice time to Bouchard and guys like that. Also, yes, I know we need puck-moving defensemen in Edmonton, but we need one de puck-moving defenseman that can play defense. Tyson Berry is terrible defensively. It's like having a Yandel in Florida. Where do I think he's going to go? I think Dallas is going to lose Alexiak, and they have a lot of really good defensive defensemen there that the play well de defense. They do well offensively, too. Heiskanen and Lindell and guys like that. And uh, I just have this feeling that they'll fit him in as a power play guy, and he'll be able to go somewhere and win a cup. Now, he's going to be looking for the big money, I think, as well. Another one would be, again, the Arizona Coyotes. The Arizona Coyote is going to need an offensive defenseman. Uh, they're also looking to change coaches, and they want to have a more offensive system. So Tyson Berry might work out well there. No, let's say that, the Arizona Coyote. Arizona Coyote would be my biggest one there. Okay, that's my full 42. We're at 23 minutes, man. Hit the subscribe and the bell. Come see my show at 3 to 5 Eastern, 5 Monday to Friday. Okay, okay, bye.